What up? What up? I see people jumping on. Y'all ready for this? I ain't even ready. We finna do it to it though. What up, Mr. Eric? Dusty Buckles. Audio sound good. Picture good. Y'all give me some feedback. I may be yelling. I shouldn't be yelling. What up, Chad Chapel? Mike Rabbit, what is going on? Yeah, it is Bass Talk time. Episode one. We'll see how disastrous this is going to be. Give everybody a few minutes. Get everybody jumping on. If you don't mind, give us a like and a share. And we'll get into this uh, ordeal here pretty quick. Try to see if we can maneuver some people around and get on this show. C26 up. What up, Tony Riggs? Burp, burp. Camp with K. See, Bruce, it just feeds right over. We're going to do it on the bass top, too. Same way. It's a little hazy? No, not on mine. No? Okay. But sounds good? Awesome. I'm showing up clear on mine. Hopefully, it clears up for y'all. All right. Let's get rolling with this. Uh, I don't know the full potential game plan. We're shooting for 30, 45 minutes. Uh, we're going to see how it goes. What's up, Brett? Uh, this is episode one, so we have no clue really what's going to happen here. Um, I thought episode one would keep simple, do a quick introductory to what we're doing, what we're about, and how we're going to go about doing it. Um, what's up, Mark? And hopefully on episode two, we're going to come in with some special guests and have a, a speaker on here and so on and so forth. So, Mr. Keith White and Matt Tuttle, uh, that's the goal. So, here we go. If you do not know us well on JR Custom Lures and you're just tuning in for the first time because it's a little different, um, welcome to JR Custom Lures. I'm Charlie Tiller. I own JR Custom Lures and with the help of my beautiful wife, Sherry Tiller, she helps me run JR Custom Lures. She is also the other artist that paints the baits within our company. Uh, we pour soft plastics, we do hard baits, we do spinner baits, jigs, a lot of different stuff. We go live with that making um, to where you can see what we're doing hands on. We thought it would be a great idea because some people don't want to sit for an hour and a half and watch you paint baits. Totally understandable. Let's get on here. Let's do some bass talk. Let's get down to real business. Just fishing in general when it comes to bass. There's a lot of stuff we can cover, bring in some new people, teach some stuff, and really hopefully bring a community of people together that we already have going, add some people to it, and really have a great time with it. So. That's the thought behind this. Um, again, this is episode one. So this is the basics. Uh, the company was started uh, a few years back. I lost my dad. Me and little Cooper started fishing on my dad's boat, uh, trying to carry on the little tradition there. Got to losing some baits, got expensive, so we started making our own baits. Uh, one thing led to another, and with the push of my wife, we're now a full-blown lure company and we produce quite a few baits so um, we've named the company after my dad uh, our biggest goal was to put his name in as many waters as we could possibly do uh, we've achieved with y'all's help and our pro staff's help uh, great bounds of where we put these baits at lots of water in a lot of different places um, so really cool but again it's not all JR custom lures at this show we're talking everything in general with bass fishing so um, that's the gist. I would love for it if you take the time to tune into our live painting shows and our bait pouring shows that we do. Uh, they are a lot of fun, but if this is all you want to do, that's fine. Tune in here and let's talk bass fishing um, and try to get this thing rolling. So, anyways, here we go. If y'all seen the intro, you've seen some of the people down here in my little corner. These are sponsors that either A, work with us and we're real close relationship with these people. We support what they're doing, um, or we're sponsoring people in general on there. So, Mid-Atlantic Kayak Bass Fishing. That is a company or a, a little group there that we sponsor. Texas Kayak Bassacre. We also sponsor this group. Sekman Jags Fishing. This is a high school, junior high fishing league in a school which we're going to have an awesome episode on that coming up real soon because Mr. Eric's going to help me. We're going to make it crazy. Um, we also sponsor those people. Now, you're looking for something a little creative. You're wanting something that we back and we say these guys make great products. Here you go. Missy's Fishing Sticks. Hella fishing poles. Awesome, awesome stuff. 
Uh, Ridge Runner Rods, another great company that does awesome rods. Um, why do we have two? Because both of them are badass. Both of them make great stuff. Uh, we carry both in our boats. Uh, we use the product, so we're preaching from experience. They're both great quality. Um, let's see, who am I missing here? Fishing with Rick. We got a little episode we're going to do that's uh, basically anytime we come on here, we're going to give you a little update on how Lake Rayburn's doing. Why? Because it's just a big lake. A lot of people in Texas love to follow. So we're going to give you an update because Mr. Rick, he runs a little deal fishing with Rick. Rick Caldwell Sr. is his name. He is one of the pro staff. And on this segment, he's going to report back to us how the fishing's doing, where the fish biting, where they're biting on, how's the water, and all that good info. We'll get that to you each week, hopefully. Chapel Driving School. If you're in North Carolina, and I know some of you up there don't know how to drive. Don't be pretending like you don't, because like, I'm telling you, See it every day. You don't know how to drive. You want to learn? Chapel Driving School. I'm telling you, they'll teach you how to drive. If one thing you learn there, you'll learn what a donkey is. The rest of it, you're going to learn how to drive. So, there you go. Um, again, the fishing with Rick. He's going to give us the Lake Sam Rayburn report every week. So, this is what I got reported back to me today. It's been hot and cold, hot and cold. So, you know that makes the fishing hard. The rain has made the water very muddy. Temps are still between 53 and 56. He's been catching everything in brush. Anytime you got the brush out there, it's where he's catching. It's where he's having the best of luck. Uh, everything's on soft plastics, crawls, sinkos, uh, any bug bait. Um, in the jar world, we don't call them sinkos. We call them sticks. So if you ever want to purchase the good ones, let us know. Um, big fish are still still out offshore. If you want in the 7 to 10 pound range, you still got to go offshore to get them. Uh, let's see. He believes they're still staging offshore. So, that's our report on that. And again, Mr. Rick's going to give us a little better info every time. Uh, and we hope to be able to give y'all something good for Sam Rayburn. Uh, go check out his page, Fishing with Rick. Um, hell of a good guy and pretty damn good at fishing, I'm going to tell you. He, he can wear them out when most people can't. Uh, in the lake conditions he's at so awesome dude go check out his stuff you'll see his logo here uh, he's on Facebook always posting videos showing you what he's fishing how he's fishing it and all that good info so if you want some Sam Rayburn stuff there you go alright so tonight I thought the best thing we could do for the first show was cover F4D's I'll give you the quick rundown F4D is a in-house built bait uh, we wanted a swim bait that was different on the market. It wasn't your standard big old swim bait. Not that there's anything against those or the A-Rig swim baits. This is just our style of swim bait we wanted to make. So we started molding it up. Now I'm telling you, it didn't go good the first mold. We probably went through four or five molds of baking this clay and coming up with a mold before we got it right. We finally got it right. Okay, so now this bait is a... Uh, a great bait, I like to look at it as a replacement for a square bill. I know that sounds stupid, but follow me. You got a square bill, you're in the sticks, you're up in the docks, you're fishing that brush on Sam Rayburn, whatever it might be, you're going to snag a treble hook any day, any time in those conditions. Tommy Woodard on here, he complains all the time about a fat body and a fast action on a fat body up around the docks and hanging up those treble hooks okay the f4d was designed to kind of replace that no it's not a hundred percent replacement but it's as about as close as you're going to get in a soft plastic and be able to generate action up in those nasty cover areas and get the bites that you want so there you have it i will see if i can change up you see it got all laid up over here let me see if i can run over here all right, I'm new at this, so y'all bear with me now. There are a number of ways to rig this bait up. And actually, I'm going to put you in here on Zoom right quick. Don't be alerted, but here is the F4D. This is nothing uh, crazy. Um, hey, Corey, yeah, if, if you got a fishing report on another lake out there, send it on to me. You know, I need it by Sunday. So we can try to work it in. No, I didn't even see it. Oh, 
But yeah, Corey, I mean, I'm telling you, if it, I'm looking for a big lake, something that's bold. People, a lot of people use. Yeah, send me a report. Um, so, anyways, here's the F40. You get to slit down the belly. You can hide your weighted hook. You got enough meat here that, again, square bill's bumping the, the nose. You can do that. You're not going to damage this. There's a lot of meat there. It works good. We've lightened our plastic. We run a softer plastic now to accommodate. The need for action in this tail and I think this is the yeah this is it so you get a whole lot more action now in this tail and you're not gonna um, be able to hang up like you will with square bill okay so that's the the general purpose now the question we get uh, all the time how do you rig a f4d okay here we go I have had my crew put together how they rigged the F4D. There's not a right and a wrong way. I'm going to show you the better ways. How about that? This first way is probably the most effective that me and many others have found with the F4D. Having it this way really generates a lot of action in the bait. You get a lot of shiny sparkly stuff going on because you are running the spinner down here. So you got this underspin. You got a screw in bait holder, and this is run on a five watt hook, quarter ounce weight. This is kind of a heavy bait, so a quarter ounce in that bait, and you are going to cover ground, son. I'm telling you, you are going to cover ground. Now, right here's picture of a six watt. I just told you this is a five watt. You can run a five watt. You can run a six watt. I've ran four watts on Sherry. It just depends, right? So find in that ballpark what's comfortable. For you, um, and run that through that way. Miss Sherry passed me notes that I need to pay attention to. Uh, okay, so store. Let me let me throw this out there. And we'll get back on the F40s. If you're going to our JR Custom Lures store, please be aware there's nothing in there. Um, we do live sales on Facebook. We do these live sales once a week, once every other week, maybe two or three, just depends. Um, we just had one. Um, I just had one this past Sunday, yesterday. So there's nothing in the store. Best way to find our baits and get in touch with any of our lures is to contact us on Facebook. Make sure you like, follow, and do the alert thing. All that you'll get alerts when we go live selling. So don't worry if you go to the store. There's nothing there. We do 90% of our sales on Facebook, and we always sell out. So there you go. Uh, back to the F40. Okay, so what I'm hoping you can see on screen here is these six odd hooks right here. Owner makes these. They're a great hook. They, they hold up. Good bite. I mean, they're going to hook up good and you get that spin action underneath. That one right there is probably one of the best that, that I've found and seen other guys using. Um, here it is hooked up in the bait. As you can see right there on the nose of it, you got a screw in bait holder. A simple hook from the underside that one's pulled down so you can see it but you hook all the way through and come out the top with your hook got the underspin underneath got all the action you want this is a different style same idea as far as hook setup now you've got more meat in the head in the head of this bait um, to get more action the goal and principle with this bait is getting that weight in the nose because if you want it to perform like a square bill, you want it nose down. A square bill, you're beating the bill on the ground, just tearing it up, right? All this has got to do is just brush it. Because all you're wanting to do is send up the, the loom of nasty crap that's on the bottom of the dirt. And whatever, you get a cloud come up. Fish that's close by is instantly going to see the cloud. There you're going to think that this is a swim bait down there, a shad, you know, what have you, that's hitting the bottom. Or it's a craw trying to get away. At any rate, it's going to create them to look. So when you're bumping that bottom, that's where the action's at. When you're coming through that brush, this tail's popping back and forth, banging the bushes, trees, whatever you got, grass, it doesn't matter. That's the theory behind that. So that's just another way to rig it right there. There's what it looks like with the weight tucked up under it. That's what you want. You want that nice, clean belly to where that weight's not going to hang up. You want it tucked up inside that meat. To where when that belly hits anything or the nose, you're going to get a smooth hit. It's not going to hang up. Now, this is a different way. I haven't ran this way. I have one of my pro staff uh, 
Chad Chapel, show me this one. I'm interested in it. Um, just the design of it, the setup, it's simple, it's quick. Most everybody has some of these laying around or close to it. Um, they work really well. So here's what it looks like hooked up. All you get is that little nose sticking out of the head right there. What's up, Joe? And that's what it looks like from the side. It's not taking a lot away from the bait, just giving you enough weight on the head to get that nose down and really beat the ground on it. And there you have it. So, that's the F4D in action. Now, can you swim it like a swim bait? Of course you can. Um, it has enough tail action to be a hell of a nice swim bait. I mean, you want to go fish this off of deeper water, off of some points that are breaking out there, go do it because it will swim it. It'll get the job done. I'm just telling you the idea and the principle behind it was to create something in replica of a square bill. So swim it. It doesn't matter. It's got plenty of action. Uh, if you go through our Facebook page, there's a lot in there about it further down towards the bottom. There's probably a few videos around of this bait swimming. Um, you get great side-to-side -side tail action. And you can see it where this breaks at right here, right? So this main body portion stays nice and firm, doesn't get all crazy on you and bump everything in sight. But this tail has plenty of action from side to side. So you're going to get the bumping in the tail, but your body's still going to run true and straight. So you're not going to have issues with this. Having that hook go through the top eliminates all the you know BS hookups on tree branches, some grass root, whatever you got that you're fishing, that eliminates that. Bubba's saying shallow, slow, weightless. Bubba knows a lot about this bait. He has swam the shit out of this, fished it a lot, and he does know a lot about it. He fishes a different style than me, of course. Surprise, right? But his style works. That style right there, weightless, really does work. So try it out that way. Um, okay, so Miss Sherry is helping me with sign language here on notes, right? If you have a question and I miss it, what have you, put it on here, send it to her, whatever, and that way she can ask me. I'll try to respond to your question on here and let you know whatever the answer is. We'll figure it out. I got enough pro staff on here, people that are customers that have worked these baits that really understand what we're talking about, and we can answer those questions. Um, Chad said he's throwing them in April on Murray. Now, when it comes to color, this is no different than any other soft plastic we make, right? So you can go from, you know, a, a two-color bait to this one's a, a three-color bait. It's endless on what you do in colors. Uh, I just poured this past week a really great color. It's a uh, golden smoke shad color. It is freaking awesome. We've put it in the F4D. It's hot. Um, it's looking good. And I think it's going to be a great, great color for that particular bait. Um, look top right corner. Oh. What you talking about, man? Um, yeah, so anyways, colors are, are endless, right? So we can create whatever. Um, if, if the lake you're fishing on, uh, who was it? Um, my shrimp guy, he's on here, I seen him all ago. Brian, he wanted me to create a shrimp colored bait. From Lubbock. And he's in Lubbock area, but he wanted a shrimp colored bait. So we made a shrimp colored bait. Um, it's what's working in your area, let us know. You know, we can usually kind of create something like that. What's up, Michael J? Uh, DDW, Fire Tiger is, a, is, is this color, is sweet in this color. Yes, Fire Tiger is hot. Um, there's not too many places Fire Tiger doesn't work, um, especially if you've got a little funky water. Fire Tiger is always a great bait to go with. Anything shad related or Fire Tiger, you're good to go. Uh, I'm reading Charles's uh, comment here. Uh, the, the top of this bait is flat. There's no split here or nothing. When you come through with your 5 out 6 out hook, it's going to poke right out the top. If you want to safety dip it back in, go for it. I suggest don't. Reason why, that's a lot of meat. And most bass are going to crush this down plenty good to get enough hook to hook them up because it's a soft plastic. But why not help them out a little bit, right? You want that 
fish in the boat, don't bury that hook back in. Keep it exposed because it's going to ride right on top and usually keep you out of any trouble. So I like to leave it exposed. That way when they bite down, it moves, boom, they're going to hook up and be good to go. Matt said, pretty awesome in North Carolina during Chad's spawn around Doc. Yes, Matt, you're exactly right. Um, it, Tommy Wooder, like I said earlier, uh, he's one of our, our pro staff guys. He he fishes a lot of docks in his area. And he, his biggest complaint for years and years has always been you work a fat body square bill up in the docks and you're going to hang them trebles up every time. This eliminates that. You know what I mean? You get plenty of tail action, which that square bill is doing a whole body side to side twist. Whereas this bait, it's just the tail popping back and forth. The body stays flush where you're going straight, has a true line that it's running. Works really good. Um, I'm reading, I'm reading. Yes, they are in an open pour mold. Um, again, we created the mold. We basically created the bait, laid it down, poured it. Now we flip it upside down and pour the colors in. That allows us to pour a lot of different colors. Um, takes a minute or two to make these. It's not the fastest bait to make because, again, there's a lot of plastic. All that has to cure out good enough to get this out of the mold without destroying it coming out. So you got to set up time before you can pull it out. Um, we are going to generate more molds of this uh, so we can generate baits faster in this style. Um, be tested for Arkansas. Awesome, Brian. We're ready to hear on that one. Uh, crawfish color. Yeah, Jimmy. Crawfish color would be great. And y'all think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, tell me I'm wrong. Pour this in a crawfish color. Fish it like a square bill around the brush, rock, dirt bottom, whatever. When this thing hits the bottom and flushes that dirt cloud up and all they see is the color of a crawfish, they're going to jack it up. They're not going to wait and smell it and sniff it and see what it is. They're going to jack it up because it's time to eat, you know. Um, no, Eric. Not carrying the six out. We do carry hooks, but they're just standard regular um uh, hooks they're a five out hook just regular hook uh, but i recommend these right here owner makes these you can get them in a, in a whole bunch of other brands i personally think the owner's great because why go broke on the hook right so owner works good you get the underspin you get the size you want you're good to go um Brian, there was yeah. a six spin blade. yes jamie carter we can do any color um special orders are hard to get right now but if it's something you're really looking for Send us a message. We'll try to work it into where we do a color for everybody and get you a bag out of it. You know what I mean? Uh, what did you say, Miss Sherry? Sorry, I missed you. Um, Brian used a six with a spin blade. There you go, Brian. But it's it's all in what you feel comfortable, right? If you want more hook exposed, throw a six. You want less, throw a five. Like I said, I've put a four on Sherry's, and that's just a little bit too small, but you can run it. Um, glow in the dark, Tommy says, for dusk. Yes. Glow in the dark. We do make glow in the dark colors on these. Well, it's usually one color, but you get a standard, you know, light colored bait that glows in the dark. It's usually a tilly kind of color, bluish. Um, works really, really good. You light it up with a flashlight, get you a good one. Don't get that, you know, 99 cent Walmart on discount flashlight because it ain't going to hold up. Go on, get you a good one. Spend you 10 bucks. Light that dude up. Put it out there. I'm telling you, huh? Um, Yes, Jimmy. Gunner's feel anything crawfish is going to get it done. And and that's like Brian, we did the, the shrimp color. It's not crawfish, but it's close enough. And Brian calls it a shrimp. I call it a cross between a shrimp and a crawfish because it's not too far off. You know what I mean? They That color would be hot. Uh, you can even tweak that color around a little bit, get where you want to get. Um, uh, Charles, we are... Our scents, we have our own, I wouldn't call it branded, it ain't branded, but we have our own mixture, our own little JR concoction that we put on for scent. Uh, it's a mixture of two scents. Um, Matt Tuttle, our, our pro staffer, he came together and got us this scent. Um, it is a proven working scent. It doesn't deteriorate and get away from your old scent which we know what old scent was that always worked for years and years and years. We know what that one scent is. Um, that's one scent we've used for a long time. We've added to that to give it a fresher vibe scent. 
It won't knock you down, but I'm telling you, the fish will find it quick. Um, let's see. Oh, they do, Chad. Chad's saying owner makes it in a 12 lot too, that hook setup, which is nice. That's huge. So the, the limit is in us on how big you want to go. You know what I mean? Um, Paul. This one right here? Yeah. What time is it say? Fayette County Big Girls staging on Main Lake Points, early bite, watermelon, red, Texas rig, and sticks, the Cinco's. That's what Tommy's telling us about Fayette County. Um, and he calls them the Big Girls are staging. So, I mean, I'm telling you, that they're there. They're not where I like to fish at depth-wise, but they're around. You can find them. Um, there are people already catching good fish, quality fish, right now. Um, so check that out. Appreciate that, Tommy. Uh, let's see who else has said something. Uh, da, 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 da. Been waiting three eight. Hard time keeping it down without. Yes, MWA. Okay, here here's where me and MWA is going to agree here. That that three eight ounce weight is never really enough if you want that bait to go deep. You gotta weight it down. Put the weight on it. There's more than one way, y'all know, to cheat these and make them go further with heavier weight. So you get these in the heaviest weight you can. If you need to jump up to a six aught to get more weight, jump to it. But a five aught will carry more weight or six aught, get you deeper in the water and have a better deal. Uh, we're getting all kinds of fishing reports. This is great. This is great for all of y'all. And I'm telling you, we're reaching out to your neck of the woods and his neck of the woods. We're trying to cover everybody, all right? So Frank Rowland, all right, Georgia, Junebug, Watermelon Red, F4D, anything, shad color. There's your Georgia report from Frank Rowland. So, I mean, I'm telling you with... With time, we should have enough info. We're going to help put y'all on fish by all y'all giving us this info to feed back. I'm telling you. Uh, Matt Tuttle says North Carolina has about three weeks so they'll stage. Uh, Miss Betsy, why are you laughing at me, Miss Betsy? I, Chad, did you hear Donkey come out from that room anywhere, huh? Kyle said, Let me know now. Kyle, put tempting me. All right, so Kyle Dunsmore. He lives kind of back home where I come from. Well, me and Miss Sherry. Um, he fishes a lake. I kind of grew up on Lake Fork. If, if you've never fished Lake Fork, you hadn't fished a lake. I'll just tell you that. There are a lot of lakes I ain't fished, and I probably ain't fished to it. Because, say, I hadn't fished. You know what I mean? So, But you got to hit Lake Fork. This is a, a lake that, dude, they're on or they're off. There's no happy medium. There's no pat you on the back because you lost your ass. They're on or they're off. And when you go to Lake Fork and they're on, and if you don't know the lake, get with somebody who does. Because when you get on them fish at Lake Fork, they're going to let you know you're on the good stuff because it's, it's going to happen quick. Um, Chad says they're starting there. Uh, Bubba says the whites are moving up. WD-40 is a good fish and attractive. Daryl, you're, you're right. And this, this is a subject, you know, we'll probably make a show on. The scent versus the, the like, WD-40, the colorant that comes over. Which one is the fish after, right? I'm going to personally say both. I don't know what fish can smell, stink. I, hell, I don't know another fish, right? But I can tell you, if I take a bait, and I put it in some stinky garlic, I got a lot more luck than if I don't. So garlic works for me. I remember back in the day, uh, dad used to have a spray. It looked just like WD-40. It was made for baits, but you spray that old dude down, chunk it in the water. It left the oil trail. This, I think all the fish in the county come over. It was such a huge oil trail. Oil trails work. So Daryl is right when he says WD-40. It's the oil trail that it's putting off. Um, any of those two things really, really work good. Um, yeah, old school, that's for sure. Matt Tuttle wrote paragraph. I'm going to miss it, I think. Hold on, that color of the flutes that we all like would be good on that 40. Just, you made some, didn't you? The smoke? If you're talking about the smoke, I did make smoke on the F4D. Yeah, that's what it's talking about. 
Tuttle, we did make smoke on F40. It's what I was talking about earlier. That color is hot in that bait. It looks amazing in the fluke, Frank. but in the F4D, it's hot. Was it Frank? I'm sorry. Corey said 10 mile length in Oregon, they mostly use mock jugs and five inch sticks and six inch sticks and take the heads and deep dive and crank baits. And that's the fish at 10 mile length in winter, early spring. Awesome. Chapel says he went bow fishing Saturday night and the carp are pairing up already. I missed some bow fishing, that's for dang sure. Um, so now that we're kind of, you know, we're speaking tournament, fishing, whatever, we're going to get into that, right? Here'd be a good chance for me to let y'all know. Starting in February, which is uh, like days away, right? We're going to do the JR Custom Lures online tournament with our pro staff, okay? I know you're going, why are you telling me if it's just pro staff? Just hang on. So our pro staff's coming together. We're all going to do an online tournament. And every month, we're going to put up a list on our page and say, if you want a chance to fish this, put your name here, and we're going to randomly select two people from that list each month to fish in the tournament. Um, it, it's pretty basic, right? But there'll be a winner at the end of that month. You'll win something. What will it be? I don't know. It's free, so don't worry. We'll get it to you. You know what I mean? At the end of the championship, the whole deal will end it in November. We're going out of pro staff we're going to label who's going to be the champion for that year and we're going to try to keep this thing going um, I'll tell you more in a second someone said it's a drip it hits Scoreville and Char said it died I don't know if it was the color he said it ran it slow next to the docks and caught plenty there you go that's um, it Charles Rimmer said you making baby turtles uh, we don't make any baby turtles I know where you can get some baby turtles uh, I miss miss just yeah, you better secretly mess. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I, miss, I miss the MG Lars due to my situation, but I'm definitely feeling a lot better today, so I hope to see most of the fish tonight. So. That's awesome, Frank. I'm glad you're getting better, buddy. Chris said, went yesterday, Chris Hando said, went yesterday, we caught 46 degrees of water, only pulled two from 45 feet of water with the two he made. Oh. Nice, Chris. Pulled two from 45 feet of, from 45 feet of water. That's awesome, Chris. Love that feedback. Uh, that lets us know that working with y'all, we're coming together to do something right. So that, that's our whole goal here. We want to make the best damn bait you can possibly get to put you on the best damn fish you can possibly find, right? Um, hopefully, the bait making, just talking about fishing, is all going to come together and help that. That's what we're shooting for. Frank says, I don't use scent, but here in Baker Strike is one of the best scents used. Frank, it probably is. I don't. Uh, I use our scent. I don't go buy any scent. I like ours, and that's what I usually go with. Um, Mustang and Lord Mustang Creeks. Okay, y'all talking that. So, back on the tournament. See, I don't see that. I don't see that. might be a lady. Yeah, I don't see that. That was Tommy. Uh, I still use Spike It Dip. Hey, Spike It, Spike it Dip has always been badass. That stuff always works, and the Bang Garlic Spray never fails. It won't let you down. Um, Jimmy says, Hey, Jimmy, I'm just saying, my dad taught me one thing, and I, I taught myself another thing. The one thing is, is when the fish ain't biting, what's the first thing you do? You go to the front of the boat, or you go to the back of the boat, and you take a leak off of one end or the other, and you make the fish bite. And throughout that time period, if they quit biting, you start spitting down in the water. Enough spit in the water, you'll generate the bite. I'm telling you, you think I'm crazy, it works. I've seen it. Um... What's your favorite old school go-to lure slash bait when all else fails? My go-to, I don't care if it's snowing, raining, sleeting, hell and sun shining, the moon's coming out, going down, I don't care. I throw a spinner bait. I start every fishing trip throwing spinner baits and I can't throw it anymore. I love spinner baits. And I go clockwork. I go spinner bait to square bill. I might grab a rattle trap if I really need it. And if I can't do nothing at this point, Dude, it, it's, I'm pulling out all the plastic I got in my boat. We're going to throw soft plastic until you can't throw it. I'm not a big soft plastics throwing guy. I love making them. I don't throw enough of them. But I'm a spinner bait and then square bill. Have you made snake bait yet? Oh, okay. Uh, snake bait. Mr. Cooper is going to help us. He's already designed his snake bait. But he is going to go in here and recreate this as far as soft plastic so we can make a mold of Mr. Cooper's snake bait that we're going to put out. That's coming this year at some point. A lot of new stuff this year at some point. Just bear with us. Tommy says, 
to no, 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 and all that. Turn the boat around three times to the left, and that'll bring it back. So, if y'all out here in these neck of the woods, y'all wondering why I'm running in a circle? That's why I'm trying to get a bite, because I don't never get a bite. I, I can't fish for nothing. Uh, on birch. Okay, so, I'll, I'll jump off the comments for a second, and we're going to jump on this online tournament. This is for our pro staff and the customers, because we're going to select two customers, right? That's why I'm telling you on here. But, it's very simple. We're going to run a five fish limit for the month. So you're going to turn in five fish every month. Yes, if you catch one that's bigger than one you've already turned in, turn it in. We're going to take your smallest one out and put your bigger one back in there. You see what I'm saying? Five fish at the end of the month. That last day of the month, we're going to turn it off probably at five o'clock or something. We ain't going to do the midnight thing because I ain't staying up to midnight to get the last racers in. You know, four or five o'clock, we'll end it. Um... Mm. I was just letting you know. But that'll be the game plan. So five fish limit every month. Uh, the the rule is it has to be caught on a JR custom lures. I don't care which one, but a JR custom lure bait has to be attached to that fish. Okay? We're running three photos. If you're smart and you can make two of these photos in one, go for it. But one photo has to be of the bait hanging out of the fish's mouth. Okay, second photo has to be the fish somewhere in relevance of your face. All right, so we want to know it's you holding the fish. The third one has to be a photo of the fish actually on the scale, digital, giving us a readout of what the weight is. Yes, we're going by weight. I don't care if you weigh it on the water, I don't care if you weigh it on your deck, if you weigh it on the bank, just weigh the damn fish, right? It's not rocket science, let's keep it simple and easy. Um, I don't care if you caught it in your backyard pond, in your bucket in the backyard, mm -hmm. or in the biggest lake you've ever fished in your life. I don't care. I want to generate photos of great fish being caught off of JR Custom Lures. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to have some fun with an online tournament to generate these photos, and people are going to get free stuff. Yes, two people, customers, two of them will be selected every month to fish with pro staff. They will not be in the running for the grand championship because they're only fishing for one month. You're only going to get to do it one time. So if we reselect you, if we select you, you don't get to go again. Why? Because we want everybody to have opportunity to get to go do that because it's going to be kind of fun. Um, but again, bank fishing, boat fishing, tube fishing, kayak fishing, I don't care how you do it. Just go fish it, right? That'll be the deal. There's not a lot of rules. Just keep it simple. We're going to turn in five fish. We're going to bring out the small ones and bring your bigger ones in if you're catching more. We're going to end it around 5 o'clock on that last day of the month. And the new one's going to start up on the first day whenever you go fishing, right? Uh, simple. Let's not make it crazy. Uh, Chad said you don't throw them because you share them unless you have any. I don't know what you said before you uh, What are you talking about, Chad? I can't throw. I think I know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? Bruce, you uh, haven't been over here that. Be glad I ain't pro staff to instead. Jimmy, I, hey, you might get selected to come in, right? Because we're going to randomly select. So I always put your name in there when we run that. So I'm telling you, there's some guys on pro staff. I, I don't plan on winning. I don't plan on winning shit. But I'm going to do it because it's going to be a lot of fun. But there's some guys on pro staff that will flat out smoke some people fishing real close to home on the bank. And there's some that's going to get in a boat and make you look silly. So Eric, it's going to be cool. Eric, You're probably right, Eric. That's probably a good idea. Uh, oh, yeah. It'll be after tomorrow because Mr. Cooper's uh, birthday is tomorrow. So we're going to have a busy day tomorrow. Uh, um, oh, soft plastics. Yes. Uh, Should I take away the biggest bass out of the five bass limit? Yes, Corey. Um, yeah. So we're, and it's just five bass total. The championship will be measured upon the total weight of. For the whole season, not by the three biggest, five big, the total weight of everything you caught for that season. That's who wins the championship. Um, Kyle said there was a 12.46 caught on Palestine. Dang it, Kyle. A 12.46 on Palestine. That is nice. All right, see, there's already some talk going on. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. See, that smack talk is what's good because it's going to generate a push for everybody to fish their rears off, and it's going to be fun. Um, all right, so that's enough jibber jabber. Um, this was a good start. I kind of know where I need to go with this. I know what we can change and, and make the best of this. Next week, next week, we will have a live speaker on here and bring them in on Skype. Hopefully that works great. That'll be our first time doing it. So uh, my tune in could be an accident. You never can tell. Um, and I don't know if anybody noticed it or not, but the last show we did a porn plastic here at JR Custom Lures. You know, I don't even know which finger, this finger. It's bad finger, so I can't show you. But I hung it up on a hook that I hang my baits on. And if you go back to the video, first part of the video when I'm pulling baits off my hooks, you can see and hear my finger click off of this hook. I almost died, but hardly anybody noticed it, surprisingly. If I would've got stuck on this hook, and Miss Sherry would've had to come get me off the wall because I was hung on the hook, it would've been a bad, bad show, I'm telling you. But I'd probably passed out. After the show, he went back and watched it like 10 times. It's hilarious, actually. It's really funny to hear that popping sound of that hook. And in my mind, I'm going, get the hurt, you know, but y'all be laughing. Uh, I understand Michael Smith. We're running that too. Uh, Jonathan said, don't take Eric with you when you're being a speaker. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, me and Eric, we're going to get on here and we're going to have a hell of a conversation about high school fishing. Okay? And it's coming up soon because I'm dying to get this one rolling. There's some finger pointing and some rock throwing I want to do. So I'm dying to get rolling on this one. Uh, yes, Tommy, like your video... But instead of getting hung and staying, it went through all the way through my finger and I immediately yanked it right back off because we was live. Well, after the live, I ended up picking my flesh that was still up there on that hook off. So anybody got some flesh in their bait? Sorry, my bad. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I didn't hang nobody's bait on there. Um, Can it be the same customer multiple times? Nope. nope. One customer gets one shot at it. So once you've been in it, we'll put your name down. You won't get to do it again. Not to be rude, but because we want to give everybody the opportunity to get to do that. Um, yes, DDW. That I, I need to save that because see, every year at our tournament, I'm telling you, every year at our tournament, there's an issue and an accident. Tommy broke us in the first year by hanging himself up on a damn treble hook out on the lake that we had to drive all the way back to the bank to get all the gizmos and gadgets to get this damn hook out of his finger. It was on video. Quite hilarious, but I felt his pain after I got hooked up the other day. Second tournament, I decided to bury a finger off in a wide open trolling motor up on the deck of my boat because hell, it was my turn, right? So I wanted to make it good. So this year, I'm hoping it's somebody else because I don't want no part of it. So we will add that to the bloopers. All right. Um, Charles Mayberry asked if there was any baits that did not sell. Yes, there were some hard baits. Only hard baits. There are only hard baits left, Charles, but if you'll send us a message, we will get you a photo of what is left out of those hard baits from that sale. All right, look, I wasted enough of y'all's time. Oh, no, we got one more. What? Uh, hold on. Sherry, find um, me a question. Corey, you can't, we can't do a phone call from someone fishing honey because it's at night time. No, Tommy, that could cost money. I almost costed us a bunch last year. No, no, no. Somebody else, pick a different I'm person. Fishing. Uh, Bluebird, Saturday, and Beaver Lake, my partner caught a striper. Uh, bass. On the second cast, I only swim bait on a spinning rod, and I said, Tom, I fished, shot a 15 pounds. Wow. Oh, no, Listen, Tommy. Omar. It is not my turn, because if um, I do it, it's going to be a big one. I have to go to the hospital type thing, because that's the type uh, of accidents I have. I hear you, Omar. I hear you. Hey, I'm telling you, Omar, put your name in there and get selected. You got a good chance there. Um, so anyways next show next Monday shooting for 8pm we're going to have a live guest on hopefully spice this thing up a little bit I know this first one was boring bear with me I got to figure out what I got to do and all my shit so y'all just bear with me if you have any questions anything of concern suggestions ideas any of that please send it to JR Custom Lures on the messenger that way we can see it we can write it down and hopefully make something of it. So any suggestions, ideas, comments, concerns, or things we shouldn't do, send it. We're all ears. I'm trying to do what we can for y'all. Uh, uh, Omar said, don't forget to tell everyone you'll add a new to Craig 
from Static. Yeah, I got him on that one. Uh, Guys, don't worry. Omar's going to get turned in fish from Static. Keith Wadden, that Hey, that's a great idea. I'm not going to get on my soapbox now. I'll wait till me and the, and the Van Dieven show because I'm going to have a soapbox and ooh, I'm going to let somebody have it. So, uh, yeah, y'all tune in for that one when it does come up. So, all right, look, we're going to get off here. We'll keep wasting y'all's time. Silly comments. So, um, next Monday, 8 p.m., we're going to do another Bass Talk. Uh, in the meantime, you get bored, just just make sure you like and follow JR Custom Lures because we're going to bring you action out here in the shop working with us, painting baits, pouring plastic. It'll be fun. Y'all make sure you go back check out some of these sponsors that's on here and look at some of their products. Really go look at them. I know y'all need some. Keith said I'm going to have to see. Keith Wadden said I'll have to see if I can get a. That's what I commented on already. Stop stressing, Charlie. This was a great show, Randy House said. Easy, Randy. I do appreciate that, sir. Um, subscribe to YouTube channel. Yeah, here are YouTube. To YouTube. We need a 1,000 subscribers. We're a long ways away. I'm going to try to take this video we made tonight and put it on YouTube. Uh, but with time, we can generate it straight to YouTube. Because also, if we can get the people on YouTube... Um, we might start doing our sales there, and they might, and they'd probably be better. We wouldn't miss the comments that we miss on Facebook. Yeah. Hey, and Kyle, I'm glad you said something. We may pull you in on this conversation when we get to conversating, just FYI, because I know you have a lot to do with that high school thing as well. So you might have some great input too, because we're gonna change some people's minds. Some of these big wigs up and up and making the you know rules up there, we're gonna change them. Rednecks can do something besides throw a football and a basketball and hit a golf ball or whatever the hell they do. We, we're going to get fishing in these schools. These people not wanting to fish, we're going to get it in there. So anyway. John Joe Costelli said YouTube question mark. Yeah, John, that's what we're talking about. YouTube, we're going to try to get to YouTube. We need a 1,000 subscribers, so we're sticking with our Facebook and uploading to YouTube until that point. Just go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's get the subscribers up. Shouldn't be that hard, dude. We got yeah. over seven thousand something followers. followers on Facebook, so <clears throat> just jump over, there, hit subscribe. You don't even have to watch. Just hit subscribe. Get our numbers up. You know. All right. We good, Miss Sherry? Yeah. <clears throat> all right. I'm about to die. Appreciate all y'all getting on here. Had a blast the first show. Hopefully, we will make this better. Again, let us know your suggestions. We're here to change it, make it great for y'all. Um, we had fun, and again, come check us out during the week until the next show, because we're going to be pouring some baits and making some hella cool plastic paint jobs, so come check us out, JR Custom Lures. Kyle said, Charlie, I'm here, sir, whatever. Gotcha, Kyle. We'll let you know. People are going right. to the store, so you might remind them. And just a reminder, on the store, it is empty. There's nothing in there, nothing in stock. We do all of our sales on Facebook. It sells out and never makes it to the store, so please don't waste your time. I appreciate you going in there. But don't be alarmed if there's nothing in there. Come back. Make sure you are liking and following our Facebook and your notifications are on. we got people that have followed us forever and their notifications get turned off by Facebook. So go back up there. Hit them dots. Make sure your notifications on are on everything. And Miss Sherry says if you go down and throw a thumbs up, smiley face, a heart, or a fart, or whatever, it gets you re-going on our page and they don't kick you out of that loop. So just an FYI. All right. Thank y'all. We had a blast, and uh, we'll holler at you Wednesday out here throwing down some baits. So y'all have a good one. Be safe, and uh, we'll see y'all later. Holla!